government outlines major development and infrastructural projects for 2021, however cautioning that their execution will be contingent on the evolution of the COVID-19 pandemic. The use of live videos on Facebook is not only becoming trendy, but questionable as well, given the high instance of, of fake and deep fake that is propagated much to the chagrin of internet users. Argentina and the world rose today without Diego Armando Maradona, the legendary football dribbler and juggler who took a fatal dribble on fans yesterday and is being remembered in tonight's newscast by his peers with whom he rubbed shoulders in the 1990 World Cup. Those are our main stories. Hello, thanks for joining us on the 7.30 News. I am Ben Menopofong. Each of us must comply with the measures that have been taken. Good evening once again. Progress made in ongoing efforts to set up a unified social code in by the head of government. The level of progress made in the setting up of a unified social code in Cameroon is one of the subjects the cabinet meeting looked at. The Minister of Social Affairs, Pauline Irene Gene, explained that her ministry is well in the process of laying the groundwork for the setting up of a unified code for the country. The instruction given by the Prime Minister, Joseph John Guti, months back, calling for a restructuring of the pharmaceutical industry with the view of creating a professional association was also discussed during the meeting. The Minister of Industry, Mines and Technological Development, Gabriel Dodondoke, said actors of the sector have been mobilized towards that end. In the field of road construction, the Minister of Public Works, Emmanuel Ngano Jumisi, presented strides made in the selection of private partners for the construction of the Yaoundé Douala and the Kribi Edeya motorways. The Minister of the Economy, Alamin Usman May, for his part, presented a report on the management of works to secure and develop the surroundings of the Yaoundé Simalen motorway, while the Secretary of State and the Ministry of Health, Alim Garga Ayatu, presented an update of the evolution of the COVID-19 pandemic. Prime Minister Joseph John Gute has invited the different members of government to accelerate the implementation of the prime ministerial directives. The prime minister has also been reassuring Cameroonians that though the implementation of the 2021 program of government will greatly be contingent to the evolution of the COVID-19 pandemic, the government will, however, not relent in working out resilient strategies to face up to the pandemic and mitigate its effect. Here now is Clarice Aray Takang with some of the key projects and programs as they featured in the prime minister's presentations to the country's lawmakers yesterday. Today. In 2021, the state will be looking forward to achieving its development agenda with a budget of 4,865.2 billion CFA francs, out of which 195.2 billion CFA francs is reserved for special allocation accounts. From a negative in 2020, growth is projected to stand at 3.3% in 2021 based on a rebound in economic activity and the price of a barrel of crude oil estimated at $43.8. Focus amongst other concerns will be on budgetary demands, health coverage and decentralization which is expected to have begun producing concrete fruits in communities. 
Attaining these objectives will require action in various areas. They include stimulating the economy by enforcing a realistic tax policy given the present circumstances, opening doors for import substitution, revenue mobilization, and the fight against tax and customs fraud. There are equally fiscal exemptions aimed at growing some businesses in different domains. Advertising will be subject to stamp duty and preferential rates given to ensure trade on competitive terms on the continent. The big parts will be getting the funds to achieve the goals identified. From oil, gas, customs, fiscal and non-fiscal sources, revenue targets have been set. The state will be hinging on these to fulfill obligations at home and abroad. Flavis Aretakan reporting there. The Finance Bill of the Republic of Cameroon for the 2021 financial year alongside three other bills have been tabled for adoption at the Upper House of Parliament. The bills were presented today during a plenary sitting chaired by the Senior Vice President of the Chamber, Abu Bakari Abdullahi. Senate correspondent Charles Anyangwe reports. The finance bill that was presented before members of the Upper House of Parliament by the Senior Vice President Abu Bakari Abdullahi this Thursday lays down the major fiscal policy orientation for the year 2021. The document that is now in the hands of senators was prepared within the global context marked by the COVID-19 crisis that is expected to witness a sharp decline to 4.4% in 2021 after recording a 2.9 growth rate in 2019. The bill that has been dispatched to the Finance and Budget Committee will be defended by the Minister of Finance, Louis Paul Motaze. The other three bills already adopted by the National Assembly that were equally presented to senators for examination and adoption include the Settlement Bill of Cameroon for 2019. The other bill already adopted by the National Assembly, which is before senators, is the bill to authorize the president to ratify the Criminal Police Cooperation Agreement between Central African states. It will be defended by the Minister of Territorial Administration. The last bill to authorize the President to ratify the agreement between Cameroon and the United Arab Emirates relating to air services will be defended by the Minister of Transport. All these bills were first of all examined at the Chairman's Conference and found admissible. And Cameroon's Minister of Labor and Social Security, Gregoire Wona, today held talks with members of the Network of Parliamentarians for the Promotion of Insurance Policies in Cameroon, Repass. Their discussions centered on the, uh, the modernization of the social security sector and the respect of labor rights in the country. Honorable Findi Stanley Mokondo is the vice president of the network, and he told our reporter Ewane Epole the substance of their meeting with the minister. See that as members of parliament, we acknowledge the fact that the government of Cameroon, through the, minis the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, has done a lot to ensure an effective social security coverage throughout the national territory. But as members of parliament, we think it's necessary that more, more is still to be done. And that's why we thought it necessary to meet the minister concerned in order to discuss on the way forward. The way forward to ensure that uh, social security coverage is extended, be it in the domain of voluntary insurance. We had a fruitful discussion with the minister in which he assured us that uh, in the days forward, through our partnership that he has given an accord, we're going to extend social security coverage to PTA workers. The new building to host the General Directorate of Taxation in Cameroon will officially be inaugurated tomorrow, November 27. The ceremony to be presided at by the Prime Minister Head of Government is expected to constitute a groundbreaking moment for the top management of taxation in their drive towards modernizing their services. 24 hours to the inaugural, CRTV's Bukwele, Prince Willard Duma, had access to the surroundings of the futuristic edifice and now takes us on a guided tour. Standing with others, yet outclassing its neighbors, Cameroon's taxation department headquartered in this edifice henceforth in an expression of modernity and productivity. Planted on a surface area of 19,821 square meters, the new directorate 
towering 11 floors from an extended complex at the basement imposes its mastery of not only coordinating 70 to 75 percent of state earnings, but easing the collection process in a digitalized era. Its inaugural, scheduled for Friday, November 27th, will unveil the rest of its inner strength and beauty, where 200 offices, a multi-purpose conference hall and restaurant, amongst others, will, to the desire of its top management, accord comfort to 600 staff. Until that official opening, the city of Yaoundé waits in curiosity. A separatist fighter from Awing village in Santa subdivision of the Northwest region who has joined the GDR center in Bamenda is appealing to his peers to leave the bushes and reintegrate the center. Chinda Terence uh, has vowed to assist any other fighter who intends to quit the bush to meet him so that they can be in that center together. He made this appeal to the officials of the DDR, including the national coordinator, Fai Yengo Francis, who encouraged him to encourage his peers to come over. We have details with Eric Lamia Wufo from Bamenda. They are the most recent ex combatants to join the Bamenda DDR Center. They are from Santa in Nizam Division and Donga Manton Division. They want to help some of their peers to drop their weapons. If you think you want to drop, don't tell your closest neighbor because you don't know what he's capable of. You only sell you out. Think if you want to drop, you can you, you can easily reach me. I'll I'll give you the headlines. Then don't be afraid. You come to the uh, uh, when you reach the uh, you are free. Many are excited to join the DTR Center in Bamenda. An officials of the disarmament committee have been advising them that the DTR will have reshaped their future. They just announced to us that six are on the road. We received 23. We have almost 200 here. I think that is like good music. DDR is serious. They should come out. The national coordinator of the disarmament, demobilization and reintegration committee, Fai Yengo Francis and his deputy, Lieutenant Colonel Koso Francis, have inspected a poultry farm, a piggery, tailoring workshop, and many other trades the ex-combatants are involved in in Bamenda. The Rapid Intervention Battalion de Beer has observed its 10th Memorial Day with sporting activities meant to reduce stress and boost the morale of the troops as they carry out their mission of defending the country. Observed every November 22, the elite forces thrilled onlookers with the exercises at the training center of the Manuwar Bay in Limbe in the southwest region. Hombo Suzy Bonjoa reports from Boya. The 10th edition of the B Memorial Day was another opportunity to honor soldiers who died while serving the nation and encourage those who are still working towards achieving their mission. At the Rapid Intervention Battalion Training Camp in Manowo Bay, the day was observed through a series of sporting activities that were aimed at increasing fitness, developing character, strength, persistence and courage, while simultaneously fostering cooperation and teamwork. Traits which to the b base supervisor are necessary for the overall performance of the soldiers. From October to the uh, the 22nd of November, we have uh, sport activity, military activity, and uh, so on. While receiving their trophies, the soldiers were called upon to carry the spirit of the games into their work. On a similar note, the Joint Committee of Experts and Top Military Officials on the Transborder Defense and Security between Cameroon and Equatorial Guinea is in its second day of deliberations today in the border town of KOC in the South region. The committee members uh, today visited illicit border crossings to take stock of the security challenges involved. We have details in this report with Pontianus Lawong from CRTV South. 
Members of the Cameroon Equatorial Guinea Transborder Defense and Security Technical Committee tracing the footsteps of illegal traffickers between both countries. They have followed a bush track to the Esabe neighborhood of Kiosi, where cross-border transactions of all sorts threaten the security of both countries. Like Esabe, many other illicit tracks exist as unscrupulous dealers strive to beat the intelligence of the forces charged with border surveillance tasks on both ends. We carry out systematic check on everybody entering or going out of Cameroon. We seize items like firearms and ammunition, hard drugs and others. Yesterday we even seized elephant tusks. We forward the culprits to competent authorities, but at times they escape. Inputs from the field are being considered in working sessions as members of the Cameroon Equatorial Guinea Transborder Defense and Security Technical Committee fine tune ideas to effectively implement the agreement on collaboration and joint action modalities on cross border security signed on July 21 this year. Bloggers from across Cameroon have converged on Yaoundé for a summit at which they are exchanging views and experiences on innovative ways of creating quantitative and qualitative online content. The bloggers and their IT partners are exchanging in the second edition of the Blogger Summit, whose opening ceremony was chaired by a senior official of the Ministry of Communication. Joyce Tata reports. A three-day journey begins in Yaoundé to empower the digital economy in Cameroon for a more profitable use of the social media in today's society. We think it's the most important um, hub for the future. There are many opportunities in digital economy. We think bloggers have to take all their part in this field. 2020's edition of the Bloggers Summit witnesses ample support from government's representatives who see such forums as timely. Blog is a modern tool of uh, communication and we are noting this communication is uh, impulsed by youth. We have to say to Cameroonian young people that they have to be moral, civic and patriotic through the work that they are doing using this tool which is uh, the blog. Blogging and the digital economy, an initiative of the Association of Bloggers in Cameroon to revisit the lessons, share experiences and visions on how to make the sector blossom, especially in a crisis hit period. There is no denying the fact today to say that social media has dominated our lives. The impacts are both positive and negative. However, unfortunately, the needle deflects more towards the negative side to the effect that it kills creativity while encouraging fake news and deep fake. One of the greatest drivers of fake and deep fake in the social media today, especially in Facebook, is the phenomenon of live videos. Alice Bay has been investigating how it is being used, misused and abused and came away with the following findings. Facebook Live is an opportunity that Facebook has offered people to do live videos that stays. People use it to express diverse ideas, either in philosophy, religion, or sports. The fundamental problem with the use of internet today is um, the lack of respect of the person with who you are interacting in the web. You know, you live in the web as you are just living in your house. You have to respect your neighbor and you have to be polite. You don't insult people. In the long run, people who carry out Facebook Live videos become influencers. There are many in the world. Uh, you have Linda Ikeji in Nigeria, Mr. Sifa. Uh, uh, I think he's rich. Sifa is rich. And many others. It has also encouraged the freedom of expression worldwide. Oh, you can... Facebook live videos attract likes and followers. In the long run, can make of the individual carrying out the live a big social influencer. And you're watching the 7.30 News on the Cameroon Radio Television, the CRTV. We are beaming live from Yaoundé. We move over to the little role where Dwala is experiencing a, re a record highs in the coronavirus screening. 
without uh, with a hundred people uh, tested per day. The figures come from the Lakintini Hospital Testing Center following the opening of Cameroon's border with countries, some of which are hit by the second wave of the pandemic. We have Cynthia Etim who was visiting the testing sites today in the littoral region and says the affluence is increasing by the day. Sources from the COVID-19 screening center at the Douala Lakentini Hospital reveal close to 400 persons are screened daily for COVID-19, with the majority being persons traveling out of the country. Since the confirmation of the second wave of COVID-19, there has been an increase in the number of people screened at the COVID-19 center. Two to three percent of positive cases are recorded out of the 400 tested daily. It takes 24 to 48 hours for those tested to know their results. Those tested positive are referred to the Mbapelepe Annex, situated on the premises of the hospital, where they are taken care of by health personnel. Medics fear that the second wave of the deadly virus, which is hitting other countries, may trickle to Cameroon if denizens fail to continue observing preventive measures. They urge Cameroonians not to relent in the wearing of face masks, respect physical distancing and hand washing. The wearing of face masks in public places will be mandatory until further notice. With the increasing number of coronavirus positive cases recorded, some secondary schools in Cameroon, in some secondary schools in the Cameroon, the technical minister has been insisting on the meticulous respect of the government barrier measures. But the worry is just how far are these measures being respected in school and what will it take for students and teachers to continue respecting them so as to curb the spread of that of the pandemic. That question I put to you. Baldwin Sam out there at the Public Health Emergencies Operations Center. Good evening. Good evening to you, Ben Menopufong, and welcome. I should say most of these measures outlined by the government of Cameroon, I should say anti-COVID measures, and those the Ministry of Secondary Education laid emphasis on recently in the uh, press release have been scrupulously respected in these secondary schools in the 10 different regions of the country. And that is why what has been noticed is the fact that most of these health units in these secondary schools, they were ensured that there is the scrupulous respect of uh, uh, the mandatory respect of uh, the wearing of a face mask by these students and teachers in the different secondary schools nationwide. And there is the mandatory uh, respect of uh, physical distancing in the different classrooms and on the campuses themselves and equally the systematic washing of uh, hands uh, before they get into the different uh, school campuses and before they get into their different classrooms equally and they say all these measures are mandatory they must be respected by the staff the teachers and equally the students themselves they want to avoid the situation where what happens in the elite world and west regions of the country equally happens in any other region of a Cameroon. and equally the ministry of secondary education is bent and in seeing into it that all these measures are scrupulously respected in the different school campuses presently and equally in the days ahead back to you ben menopufo thank you very much baldwin for those updates on to some other developments now. The French ambassador to Cameroon, Christophe Guillou, made his maiden outing to the Chantal Bia Foundation here in the nation's capital today. The French diplomat was out there to gauge for himself the level of care and follow-up of HIV AIDS patients at the foundation, especially in the domain of the mother-to-child transmission curbing. Ndanga Kebi reports. Visiting the Chantal Bia Foundation for the very first time, the French diplomat His Excellency Christophe Guillou and his entourage were received upon arrival by Mrs. Abi Subidung, the Secretary General of the Foundation and top officials of the General Secretariat. 
In the presence of the WHO resident representative, Savina Amasari, the delegation received first-hand information on the functioning of the center, especially in the domains of health, education, and social services. In the unit for HIV care and follow-up of patients, they discovered that 72 pregnant women and 1,330 children are currently on antiretroviral. I came here to see on the ground what was the reality of the fight against uh, HIV AIDS, especially towards uh, the, the younger the babies, how they, they get appropriate medication. Satisfied with the useful information gathered, Ambassador Christophe Gilou signed the Golden Book, a sign of further collaboration before taking off. Cameroon and the Central African Republic have strengthened cooperation ties to stop illegal crossing on the Douala Bangi Jamena corridor. The corridors of the, or rather the coordinators of the weighing stations of the both countries met recently in Douala to discuss the ways of ending this illicit crossing. We have this correspondent report from CRTV Center. <laughs> Stakeholders of the tourism sector from across the country answered present at the second edition of the Information Fair for the Promotion of Responsible Tourism in Municipalities in Cameroon. Their main mission would be to brainstorm on how to revamp the sector after the coronavirus pandemic and showcase the best in the sector. It has been a very difficult uh, year, but uh, when you know we as a tourist guide, we don't only guide, we do promotion, we, we have uh, brochures that we provide to encourage Cameroonians. It's an opportunity for us to make Cameroonians discover Cameroon because you cannot give something to somebody when you don't really know it internally. You know it gathers so many people. And that's one of the places that we meet uh, people who really want, so many Cameroonians really want to know about Cameroon, but they don't know where to. So when they come, when they're around, we bring them around to explain to them what it is. And many, so many of them really see that uh, we are very important because through us, they really have what they really want. She's work is promote the culture and all the Cameroon. For example, the Northwest, the Southwest. From culinary arts to modeling and tourism services, the participants at the fair examined how terrestrial products can contribute to the development of the sector. We think that uh, inside community, territorial community, we have another product who can carry out the image of Cameroon. You have seen with football, you have seen with uh, the miel de cou, you have seen with football, uh, with poivre de penja. We have many and many other products we can carry out the image of Cameroon. I think that we, got, we must go in that direction. The three-day event will be an opportunity for the participants to share their experiences on how to contribute to the development of the tourism sector. And that was Colette Janida reporting on the second edition of the Information Fair for the promotion of responsible tourism. We are sorry for that mix-up. Some indomitable lions, and there we are in sports, some indomitable lions who played the 1990 Football World Cup in Argentina have qualified the late Diego Armando Maradona as one of the world's footballs, uh, uh, one of the greatest world football they have ever known. They recall the experience uh, they encountered against Cameroon in, the, in Italy 1990. As they say, it will remain forever inscribed in their memories. Baldwin Samar told with some of the 1990s quotes and put together their memories in this report. He was considered one of the greatest footballers in the world. His achievements and contributions in spicing world football will greatly be remembered by former Indomitable Lions who played with him during the 1990 World Cup. We just left the hospital after an operation one month after he dies. For every footballer, it is a great shock. His death, they say, is a bitter pill to swallow. Before the match, it was Maradona, and after the match, it was still him. He is the only one who came towards us after the match to congratulate us, after our victory against them. But Diego Armando Maradona's legacy leads to a generation of players. What Maradona did for football, many young players today got inspired from him. It's sad to see him die this early. 
the football icon succeeded to write his name in the minds of many and the Golden Football Bowl. And that's where we'll leave it for this edition of the 730 News. Thanks for watching. I'll be back on Monday. Have a great weekend. The wearing of face masks in public places will be mandatory. CRTV News, ici, toute l'info. L'Ordre national des ingénieurs de génie civil fête ses 20 ans. La profession qui aujourd'hui rassemble plus de 3000 professionnels a un rôle à jouer dans la conception des ouvrages et infrastructures qui améliorent la qualité de vie au quotidien. 